So today we're going to be examining the abdomen. The first part of the examination of the abdomen is to do a general inspection. The things that we're looking for are jaundice, pallor, spider knee virus, pigmentation, any gynecomastia or paucity of body hair. The next thing we do is move on to inspect the hands specifically. Please may have a look at both of your hands. Good. We're looking for any clubbing or cyanosis, any Dupuytren's contractures, palmar erythema, or any other signs of liver disease. Can I ask you to extend your hands out for me and bring your hands back? Looking for a flap. Thank you. That's great. Okay, moving up now to the head and the neck, I'm going to look at the eyes. First of all, could you look up for me? Looking in the gutters for any pallor, looking for acterus, the jaundice of the sclera, and any xanthelasma. Could you open your mouth for me? Looking again for central cyanosis, any ulcers, abnormal pigmentations, or other signs in the mouth. Okay, moving down now in our inspection, looking again at the chest, noting for body hair, any gynecomastia, or more spider nevi on the trunk. Moving down now, we come to inspection of the abdomen itself. The things that we're looking for here are any abnormal distinction, any masses, any distended veins, or any abnormal pulsations. Now we're moving on to the palpation of the abdomen. For this, it's important to get down on your knees so that you're at the right level for palpation. So now we'll move on to our palpation of the abdomen. Starting with palpation with light touch, asking the patient if they've got any areas of tenderness. Have you got any tenderness in your tummy? No. Can you let me know if anywhere's tender? Okay. Lightly palpating in each of the nine areas of the abdomen. Now to move on to our deep palpation, we'll firstly be palpating for the liver, starting in the right iliac fossa. Could you take a deep breath in and out for me please? Okay, starting again in the right iliac fossa, moving diagonally over to the left hypochondrium to feel for any enlarged spleen. Again, you can take deep breaths in and out for me. Good. Next, we move on to palpating for the kidneys. If I could just move your arm. You need to get one arm under, underneath the patient, one hand on top, and you gently try to blot the kidneys upwards and feel between your hands for any enlargement. And again, over to the other side. Okay, finally, palpate for any aortic aneurysm. Next, moving on to percussion. Firstly, trying to percuss out the liver. Starting from well below. and noting where the bottom edge of the liver is. And cussing down the top edge of the liver, making a note of the size. And palp cuss again with the left hypochondrium. Finally, cuss for shifting dullness. Cussing in the flank, the note of which should be resonant, 
if there's any dullness in the flank, ask the patient to roll over on the left hand side. And pick us again to ensure the dullness has shifted. Right, finally we auscultate the abdomen. That's great. Now we can ask a patient to sit forward. Would you mind to sit up for me? With the patient sitting forward, inspect the back for any renal scars and auscultate for any renal bruise. While the patient is sitting forward, we can complete our examination by feeling for any cervical lumps added on to them. The final part of the abdominal examination involves an examination of the inguinal area, looking for inguinal lymphadenopathy, an examination of the external genitalia and a rectal examination.